Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we are back for dispatch number two from CES 2018. And we are in my favorite place right now, which is Eureka Park. And it's called Eureka because that's what you say when you find something you've been looking for. And we're looking for hidden gems today, uh, which we're going to explore. Before we do that, though, we've got a couple things to talk about. The first is our CES sponsor. That is Silicon Dust, the makers of the HD Home Run, my favorite digital television tuner. You plug it into your network. You plug another wire into an antenna or your cable system feed, and you can get your television signals onto your set-top boxes, your smart televisions, your computers, and everything else. They're great. Check them out at SiliconDust.com. And we had a big product announcement from them yesterday. Now, also yesterday, we visited Lenovo at their suite. And they had a bunch of things that were on embargo from different days. I didn't want to screw it up. So I just figured I'd wait till today to tell you about all the things that I saw. Uh, so we're going to start first with the uh, Lenovo Mix 630. And that is going to be something that we shot yesterday. So take a look. So we're at the Lenovo suite. And they have this really neat computer here called the Mix 630. And it is a Windows device. It looks a lot like there are other mixed devices, but it is thinner. Uh, but this one is powered by a Qualcomm processor, not an Intel processor, but it is running Windows 10. And uh, it's going to give you more functionality than we might have seen with uh, some of the other versions of Windows in the past that ran on some of these lower end mobile processors. There's going to be uh, compatibility with most of the apps that are on the Windows uh, store. So you should be able to find things to run on this that are not just limited to this platform. And there's also some degree of compatibility with Intel based applications as well, but those might run a little slower. Uh, the cool thing though is that you get about 20 hours of battery life, they say, out of this tablet, which is much more than what you would get out of a uh, Intel tablet. Performance may not be as fast perhaps as a, you know, a Acceleron or a i5 or something, but if you're looking for good battery life and the ability to run some of your Windows apps, these Qualcomm based Windows devices might be something to look at, and we're going to be taking a look at one when it comes out. And they also had two really interesting things involving virtual reality, but accessible virtual reality. It's their Mirage system. There's a camera and a new uh, all-in-one headset display. Let's take a look at that. So we're here at the Lenovo suite with some stuff that they are announcing that might be of interest to some VR fans out there. This is a standalone VR headset called the Mirage Solo. And what it integrates is essentially Google Daydream, which you may have heard of before, which is, or was, or still is, uh, this device that works with your mobile phone. Uh, this one is self-contained. So you get a pretty powerful little mobile uh, device inside of this headset that gives you a really decent VR experience. We tried it a little bit earlier, and I was pretty impressed with it, actually, because uh, this headset here is designed for what is providing imagery to your eyes. So there's no real adjustment to make on it. It's got a cool remote control on here, so you can navigate uh, some things with inside the interface. And it's pretty lightweight also. But again, uh, self-contained, really cool stuff. You can even walk around. It has the ability for you to uh, look at things closer if you want to get up close with some item you're seeing in the virtual world. And that, that I thought was pretty cool. So we're going to look at this hopefully in a few months when it's released. Uh, no pricing on this yet. The other cool thing they've got here is the Mirage camera. And what this is is a 180 3D camera, hence the two lenses on the front. Uh, one of the things they told me is that uh, 360 video is out there, but from what Google is seeing from some of their research and data, that most people are not really looking all around. They're kind of following the main action of the scene. Uh, so what you do is you just set this camera up. There's no viewfinder on it because it sees everything in front of it. And it gives you a wide field of view in 3D that you can still look around with when you're in a VR headset like this <laughs> Mirage Solo or a other, some other headset that's compatible with YouTube. So really impressive, actually. We were really kind of uh, having a good time playing around with this. And this might be a little more approachable for people trying to get into uh, some of the VR video stuff. And the other thing to keep in mind with this is that because it's shooting in 3D, you get 3D when you're watching it versus 360, which does give you 360 degrees of, of view. You just don't get the 3D with those. You do get it here. And we also got a look at the Lenovo Smart Display. And this is a Google Home device with a screen. And I would compare this to the, uh, the Alexa device we looked at a little while ago, the Echo uh, Look, which had the Echo Show, I'm sorry, the Echo Show that had a screen and you could uh, do other Alexa commands with it. And uh, just like the uh, Echo device, this does not have apps that you can install. It's completely driven by the voice assistant. Uh, but it looks nice. It's got a nice decor to it. In fact, one of the ones that we looked at there was uh, having 
it a nice bamboo backing to it, and you can do all the things that you do with uh, your Google Home device, but get some visual feedback as well, along with some limited web browsing based on some of the queries that you're making. So it's not an Android device in the sense that you can install apps on it. It might be running Android in the background on it, but uh, relatively locked down, but pretty cool thing. Uh, there's a 10-inch and a 8-inch version. The 10-inch is 249, the 8-inch is 189. And they also had a Thunderbolt dock with an integrated GPU, a GTX 1050. You're not going to get much more than that due to thermal limitations, but it was really cool to see a, a GPU integrated into such a very small package. I hope to get one of these in to test it as well. So that's what we saw at Lenovo, and now we're going to go walk around this place. We've got about two and a half, actually three and a half or four hours to do this, and we're going to find as much as we can that I find unique and interesting, and who knows, maybe one of these companies will be the next big thing. Let's go find them. So this is the Explore Touch, and it's from a company called Hap2U. Hap, of course, being haptic feedback. And this display technology will create friction on the screen uh, in response to your finger moving across it. And what's cool is, as I'm petting this virtual iguana here, I'm feeling a little bump as my finger moves across on each of his ridges. And this is not like a vibration motor or some kind of haptic motor. It's changing the screen here. It's putting some uh, minute vibrations in that create friction as my finger moves across. So probably would be uh, less power consuming than a haptic motor might be, and it might be more accurate because you can actually have different parts of the screen react to what's on the screen. So for people who are visually impaired, it might be useful, or if you're trying to operate your device without looking at it, it might be useful for that as well. Uh, this is something that's going to go into other products, so it's kind of a B2B thing, but I found this really kind of cool, so wanted to show it to you. So I found this neat little camera mount here. This is called the Wyrule Light, and I'm going to try very hard not to uh, cause any damage here. And what you do is you have this little dial controller here. You put a camera on this, and it comes with the rope, and you can string it over 100 feet here in the United States, or 50 meters. They also have a 100 meter length, which is about 300 feet or so here in the United States. And uh, you can run this camera back and forth for a good, number, a good length of time, about three hours, so more than a drone. Uh, so you can think about maybe hooking up like a DJI Osmo or something that you can control remotely with it. And I'm going to give this controller back to her before I break it. Uh, and she's very nervous watching me do this. Uh, so it costs uh, right now $279, $239 or $239 on Indiegogo for a pre-order. And then you can get it after it is produced and ready to go uh, for $399. It doesn't include the camera, of course. It's just got a standard mount here. But uh, kind of a neat little alternative to drones. Uh, they did some examples where they're sending it through windows and stuff. So if you're looking for a really unique marketing thing and you want controlled flight, uh, the rope here is the way to get that controlled flight. So yesterday we were talking to the inventor of the Benji lock, and he was talking about a mini one. So the other one they had, that fingerprint lock, was rather large. Uh, they got a tinier one now. That's the mini version of the lock, so it'll do the same thing that we saw last night. I was eager just to see the size difference. Now I have, and you have too. So this is the Wi-Fi plug, and this is the UK adapter, and of course the US version will be a little different. And it is a smart plug, we've seen a lot of these before, but this one works with HomeKit in addition to Alexa and Google Home and IFTTT. So if you are a multi-hub home, as I am, uh, this will work with all of the different hubs. And I haven't really found one of these out there that does that. Uh, they've also integrated some other things. They look at your user behavior, so if they find that you're always uh, shutting down your devices at a particular time or based on a certain set of conditions, it will also uh, shut down those devices then. But if you are doing any kind of home automation through any of the major hubs, uh, this one supports them all. A little more expensive than most because it is supporting all these different technologies, and Apple charges a nice licensing fee for these things. I think it's about $45 per plug, but if you are looking for universal compatibility in your smart plug, this one might do it for you. So here's a cool thing. This is called the box lock, and I'm sure you've been hearing about the, uh, they call them the porch pirates, but I call them thieves. And what they do is steal your stuff off your porch. And these guys have a neat solution. So uh, of course, we've been seeing some stuff where you can let the uh, delivery driver in with a camera from Amazon and everything, but maybe you don't want to let people into your house. This might be a solution. So this is a barcoded, uh, a barcode reader here on this lock. And uh, what it does is it ties into your incoming delivery. So you tell the app, what's coming and a tracking number. It goes out to the delivery carrier's website, make sure it's due for delivery today. And then I'm gonna have Ross here demonstrate when that uh, delivery driver shows up with that package, with that tracking number that's due to be delivered today. He's gonna scan that real quick, go ahead. And uh, what it will do is uh, validate with Wi-Fi that the package has indeed arrived and it will unlock the lock. So you can then have the delivery driver unlock it. You put your thing in the box here, 
nobody's going to take that, and you can lock it back up again, and you are good to go. And what I liked about this is that it's really validating that the package coming is the one that it's going to allow to unlock. So you can't just show up with a random label and unlock this thing. It does validation, and you're not letting people in your house to drop off packages, which I think might be a better alternative uh, than some of the other things we've been seeing out there. This is $129 right now. Uh, not yet shipping, but shipping soon, and it is a working thing here. It's on Indiegogo right now, and you can check it out there. So uh, the box lock, pretty cool. So if you think about your home during the day, you're getting a lot of sunlight on your home. And if you're not home, uh, you're heating up your house and you're missing an opportunity perhaps to generate some electricity. My house has got really good southern exposure. I've got no solar panels. Uh, these devices here are called solar gaps and they sit on the exterior of your home and they can actually get you some solar energy generation while you're not at home. So what you do is uh, have your Google Home or your Alexa uh, program to open these things up, perhaps when you leave the house or something. Your house will not get all that hot during the day because the sun is being blocked by them, uh, and you'll also be generating electricity. Uh, price and uh, how much you can generate with this is going to vary based on where you live and uh, which dealer networks you work through, so it's hard to come up with a price for exactly what this will cost. But the cool thing is, is that these can also double as storm shutters because they can shut the other way and they've got some pretty decent uh, metal here in the back that should be able to protect them from uh, you know decent storm related damage so pretty cool idea here because there's a, always a wasted potential whenever you've got the sun beating down on something and you don't have a solar panel there to collect the energy so I just ran into some friends of mine simply Nuck, and we're gonna do some more with these guys in the future and uh, they've been mostly a B2B company, and they've been taking the Intel NUC and uh, integrating them for their customers. And there's obviously some uh, value for consumers as well, as we're all doing these home media servers and stuff to be able to have turnkey solutions. And uh, that's what the home base here might be used for. Um, I call this kind of the stretch limo of NUCs because they uh, made it a little bit taller um, in order to accommodate larger hard drives. And uh, this will be something that'll be uh, easy to use on your television and of course integrate with all the uh, different home theater and cord cutting stuff that we like to look at on the channel. Now what caught my eye as I was walking by is this beast right here. This is the new Hades Canyon Nuck that I am sure uh, many of you have heard about. This has got the new hybrid Intel AMD processor. So it's got an eighth gen uh, Intel i7 quad core along with an AMD graphics subsystem or GPU essentially on the same die. So it's kind of a merger of two competitors here. It's kind of cool, it's got a light up skull here. Uh, Hades Canyon's a really cool name. On the back it's got two Thunderbolt ports along with a, a few other ones as well including dual uh, LAN ports as well. It's kind of a nice little beast and it's VR capable uh, and I'm really eager to try one of these things out. So cool stuff. And the last thing here is Another little box that the Simply Nuck people are making, uh, this is a drive array that can attach up via Thunderbolt to your Nuck, and it looks the same. It's got the same industrial designs. So you can stack them on top of each other or put them next to each other. It looks, looks the part, and you've got uh, a good amount of room in here to store some pretty fast SSDs or other hard drives and stuff. So check them out. they got some cool stuff here, and I think we're going to be doing more with this as they start going into the consumer market. All right, here's another cool thing I found. This is in the audio visual section where I'm finding a lot of cool stuff. Uh, this is the Ojo, and you may have heard about this. This is a projector that works with your Nintendo Switch. So if I take the Switch out here, you can see it just disconnected. We got a real Switch here. I'm gonna dock it inside of here now, and uh, now that should kick on to the projector here once it boots up, and maybe it takes just a second for the video to initialize, and there you go. So you can dock with this thing, charge it. You have all your USB ports and everything else. And what's cool is that uh, you could also plug in devices via HDMI, and there's a speaker on there too. So you can pretty much set this up out in the garage outside or something, project against the garage and have yourself a uh, fun little big screen Nintendo Switch experience at night in the summertime. So that might be kind of a fun little use for this thing and maybe project some movies too. Uh, this is gonna be $369. $369 for this version, it's coming out soon. And then this is something I've been waiting for, uh, $39 for this thing, and this is exactly what you think it is. It is a dock uh, that works with your Switch, and you just plug this little cable into its USB Type-C port on the bottom, uh, just lay it flat on your table, and you've got the HDMI out here 
along with a USB port and an additional USB Type-C port over here. So I am looking forward to having one of these because I need one of these, and I think a lot of you do as well if you're trying to hook your Switch up to more than one television for a lower price than the standard Nintendo dock. So we also checked out this really cool thing at a booth from a company called Novetto, and what they have is this directional audio technology. And the guy said, this is like headphones without headphones. They said, you're full of it. I said, I'll give it a shot, what the heck. So I sat in front of this computer, it detected my face, it found my ears, and it was directing audio just to my ears, and I had uh, Goldie behind the camera listening in as well. She could not hear what I was hearing, and she was right next to me. It was pretty impressive, I gotta tell you. Uh, every once in a while, somebody actually does have something that lives up to their pitch. Now, I would like to try this out in a quieter environment because obviously with the show floor being so noisy, uh, perhaps there might be some residual sound coming through, but it was still pretty impressive that uh, she could not hear what I heard, and then I had her stand in front, and I experienced that as well, so really cool stuff and we'll see where this ends up. It's not in a product at the moment, it is kind of a concept, a technology that might be in something down the road. But I will say overall this has been a relatively disappointing day down there. Usually we see a lot more stuff that kind of rises to the occasion of a, a little thing that we do at their booths. There wasn't a lot of innovation this year in my opinion. I think part of the problem is, is that we've kind of hit a maturation point with our technology. The sensors are mature, the processors are mature, and I'm just not seeing a lot of cool and new and different things. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. There's still more to see, of course. We're going to go up to some uh, more companies that have a little bit more money in the bank, so perhaps we'll see some uh, more innovative things tomorrow. So stay tuned. Another dispatch is coming up the day after this one. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, Steve Blixt, Stanley Taub, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.